This is a church, like I think a lot of churches, that was small, that was dying, that had gotten right to death's door. It looked death right in the face. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. We got it. Is it a miracle story? Oh, I think it is. Greystone, uh, probably seven, eight years ago, would have was headed for closure. That was not a lot of fun. Not a lot of people wanted to come here because we were a graying, dying church. So Greystone Presbyterian Church entered into a process of transformation. They wanted to live. It was a remarkable thing to hear because they said very clearly, if we have to close, so be it. But we'd like to go down doing ministry. And there was a lot of spiritual uh, atrophy that had taken place here. So what we really began by doing was getting down into the Bible, getting down uh, into worship services and prayer. And, and from the very beginning with the transformation process, prayer uh, was at the heart of everything that we did. We worked our rears off praying every night on our knees. How in the world, what are you going to do with us? What is your plan for us? What do you see for us? Where can we go? What can we do? How can we serve you? God, for these prayers. And for the, the answer prayers Greystone got really wasn't what they expected. Hearts. Out of the blue, their neighbor, Christ the King Catholic Church, called. They wanted to buy Greystone and use the space for a new preschool. We really were against it. The session was against it at first. But as the people of Greystone continued to pray, they began to sense God asking them to reconsider. I, I think you have to listen. You have to listen to God. As Greystone learned to listen for God in their transformation process, through prayer, Bible study, and worship, God answered their prayers with an unexpected gift. Christ the King offered them much more than they expected for their church property. I kept having to say, but this is, this is their church home. And I said, there's an emotional attachment there that you cannot put a price on. I got up and I said, you know, we can stay here and, until the last one of us dies and they close the doors, or we can sell this church. We have a wonderful offer. It was a little hard to say that, you know. From the brink of death, God heard Greystone's desire to live again. Now they have the opportunity to bring the good news of Jesus Christ to a new community. By Easter Sunday, 2011, Greystone will worship here at this Deer Creek Elementary School, eventually building a new church in this fast-developing neighborhood. Well, that's where everyone's moving. That's definitely the growth area for this city. And I've been so impressed, like, as just coming new to the church, seeing um, people who have such a history here at Greystone in this location be so open to moving and reaching a, a new generation. It would be great to have some new young families in there and young people like myself and my wife. We have a bunch of mom and dads here that, you know, help us grow, and we would like to start a family someday, too. And, it would be awesome to, you know, help grow in that and help our family grow in this new church and new life. Greystone is in the midst of its own Easter resurrection. And hopefully this resurrection can be a model for others or at least just a hopeful story to say that there's possibility for new life. Greystone has found their future by re-engaging the best of their past. This is what they looked like 60 years ago when a Sunday school class from Central Presbyterian went out in the middle of nowhere, where the city was growing then, to start a new church. And one of the, the few things we are taking from the old church to the new church is this DNA of this uh, almost evangelical zeal to go out to the edge. They have been able to catch a vision of what uh, God promises. 